the person you are trying to reinvent yourself to be, you have to consume that. If you clicked on this video thinking that I'm going to sugarcoat everything that I said because I feel sorry for you, then you're wrong. And this isn't the video for you, so you should click off. still watching this then that means you're ready to listen to the advice that i have for you and you're ready to actually apply them there's no point in continuing to watch all these how to gain confidence and how to love myself and how to glow up if you're not gonna take the advice and apply them like you're literally just wasting your time <sighs> Now that I've got that off my chest, let's just hop into what is really reinventing yourself. A lot of people may think that reinventing yourself means just disregarding who you are and just creating a brand new image for yourself. And yes, you are rebranding yourself, but that's simply that, a rebranding. It isn't throwing everything away and starting new. Speaking in terms of reinventment, it's literally just bettering yourself. When the new year rolls around, a lot of people are like, new year, new me. And I don't agree with that because nine times out of 10, they're lying anyways. But the reason I don't agree with it is because it shouldn't be new year, new me. It should really be new year, better me with bigger goals. That is what reinventing yourself is reinventing yourself we need to talk about self-love because you can't now that we've established what a reinventment is we have a reinventment if you don't love yourself like let's be for real here self-love is literally having confidence and knowing that you're different and you take pride in that a lot of people may call people who are confident cocky but those are two different things cocky is when you're putting other people down confident is simply knowing that you stand out and you're okay with that and that's what makes you happy now having self-love and having self-confidence we all know it's much easier said than done but sometimes you need to literally lie to yourself like if you don't feel pretty you need to literally go to the mirror and tell yourself that you're pretty you need to keep continuing to do that because guess what we weren't born hating ourselves oh, mind boggling you weren't born with insecurities nine times out of ten i'm confident in saying ten times out of ten because it's really just you know insecurities weren't brought up until someone else pointed it out and pointed out the fact that it wasn't beautiful and that is where the insecurity started like honestly <laughs> if you're continuing to push a negative image onto yourself and saying that oh i just i don't feel pretty today and i <laughs> why does my hair look like that of course you're not gonna love yourself because you're not even speaking to yourself in love manifestation is a real thing so if you're constantly manifesting these negative thoughts it's what you're going to evidently believe like it's just how the mind works your mind feeds what you give it so if you're feeding it negative thoughts then that is what it's gonna take so if you're feeding it positive thoughts and you're focusing on things that you love about yourself you need to realize that it's ultimately up to you to feel how you want to feel if you wake up every day and you feel sorry for yourself then you're going to be sorry if you have to lie to yourself lie i'm telling you because i was once in that position i was not confident i was sad but what did i do i lied <laughs> I lied so much i start believing it and now today I can say that I'm very confident, I love myself, and it took time, and I understand that it's going to take time, but you have to take steps in order to go that route. It's going to be a hard, up and down, slope, whatever, it's going to be hard, but you need to be brave enough to step out and take that. One advice that someone gave me which was actually my brother so shout out to him what he said was maybe if you stopped looking in the mirror so much you would be much happier 
And when I tell you that literally hits something, you're first looking in the mirror, you're like, oh, I look good. Like what? Like I kind of look cute today. But then you keep looking in the mirror and you start seeing things that you don't like. Like, oh, my face is breaking out or my cheeks are big or my eyelashes are falling out. I don't know. You start seeing things that brings your self-esteem down because you're literally analyzing yourself so crucially don't focus on things that you can't change at that time and you need to realize that some things do not last forever like i'm telling you like when my confidence started going down really significantly was when I was going through puberty and I had really bad acne and it was affecting me negatively. And I would literally just be in the mirror for hours just picking at my pimples and I was stressing about them, which makes acne even worse. And people would always point out like, there's a pimple, there's a pimple. I'm like, shut up. And like I said, I would just be in the mirror for like hours. But I was like, you know what? I don't care anymore. Like I, I've literally done everything. I've tried all these skincare remedies, all these exfoliating things, tips that all these YouTubers and influencers are giving me, but they're just not helping. So what did I get? I got out the mirror and I started focusing on, okay, my skin's messed up, but look at my hair. It's great. And I know a lot of people say don't push out your negative vibes because you feel negative. But honestly, I'm not going to lie, y'all. It helped me. Like, when someone would try to point out how my face is breaking out, I would literally point out the fact that they're bald. Because don't point out obvious things. And then that's going to shut them up and they're going to stop. So, honestly, my advice is to do that. So, yeah need to know that self-love is very crucial if you're trying to reinvent yourself okay? now that we've discussed about how, how self-love is crucial on reinventing your yourself we're now going to talk about if they're actually benefiting you or if they're just making your life harder by relationships i do not just mean romantic relationships i mean friendships family ships situationships whatever type of ships with whoever type of people you need to go and reflect on them you need to figure out if they are helping you or if they're just a weight bag that's making it harder for you to reach your best version of yourself now don't get me wrong here i'm not saying that the people you choose to invite in your life you should take advantage of by just using them in order to reach your goals but i am saying that there are red flags that you shouldn't allow in your relationships that you have with people and we're gonna go over those red flags first red flag is if they're always negative you do not want someone who's always negative in your life because there is a term you become who you surround yourself around so if you're surrounding yourself around negative people who have no goals for themselves or who's always upset about something or who's always depressed then you're gonna become depressed and you're gonna lose track of your goals because you're gonna be trying to help these people they're always gonna constantly come to you with their problems and their issues and they're gonna weigh you down now there is a difference from friends who are just in a struggling spot and that's okay because we all get there and it is okay to lend a helping hand and help people out and give them advice but you should not be doing it on a constant basis, especially if they're not even bettering themselves. Why would you continue to sit on the phone with someone for hours who are complaining about their life and what they have going on, but yet they're literally doing nothing to change it? Like, you're just going to keep sitting on the phone and you're just going to keep complaining and you're not doing anything to change it. Like, get yourself together and you don't need those people around you in your circle because they will poorly affect you i'm telling you because i've been in these situations before and the best way to deal with a situation like that is to just cut it off literally it's gonna be hard for some people 
but you have to put yourself first it is about to be 2024 and it's time for you to stop putting others first and you need to start putting yourself first and you need to start doing what's best for you basically do what's best for you and these negative people they're not what's best for you at all the second red flag is when the people you are choosing to build relationships with are continually pushing your freaking boundaries and they're continuing to disrespect you even if you don't realize it's disrespect it may be disrespect listen here they will try to be so sneaky and so dl about it but they're really trying you and you have to know when this is occurring or else you will be looking stupid you will be looking like boo boo the freaking fool now i'm gonna give you an example okay i'm gonna give you an example Let's say Sally is your best friend, okay? But Sally has been constantly joking about my knee scar. I'm just using this as an example, okay? I have a conversation with Sally and I tell her, hey, I don't like you joking about my knee scar because it was a very traumatic experience for me. And it's something that I'm struggling with accepting because it's something that I have to learn how to deal with. So you making jokes about it doesn't make me feel like a great person. Now, if Sally was a good friend, <laughs> Sally would be like, I am so sorry, Naima. I understand where you're coming from and I won't do it again. And Sally will literally never do it again. Now a bad friend, a bad friend will be like, Sally is the bad friend. Sally says, hey, Naima, you're literally doing too much and it's not that big of a deal. Everybody deals with things and it was literally a joke. That is a bad friend. That is a bad friend because you set a boundary that you didn't like what Sally did. But Sally is still trying to find ways to validate why she did what she did is okay when in reality it's not because you're not okay with it. And anytime you're not okay with something, it shouldn't be an issue to be corrected if that person really values you as a friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whoever you are to that person like it's pretty obvious so if you're setting boundaries and people are constantly pushing your boundaries or if that person is trying to unvalidate the reason or tell you that you're doing too much or that you're being too sensitive then that's not a good friend because a good friend will generally try to see where you're coming from and they will apologize and they will try to fix the relationship because they value who you are they value what you bring to the table and they don't want to lose you point blank period and you shouldn't have to force it out of them you don't you shouldn't have to force an apology out of them the apology shouldn't be backhanded it shouldn't be a i'm sorry i joked about your knee scar but I just thought it wouldn't be, it shouldn't be none of that. It should just be straightforward. Like there's no going, there's no beating around the bush about it. Oh, if you get a Sally B, you cut that B off. Point blank period. By establishing with yourself what type of people you want to surround yourself around, this will not only tell you what kind of person you are, but this will help you reinvent yourself. It will allow you to surround yourself around positive people who have goals, who have expectations who motivate you who support you people who actually care about you and that way you're more likely to reach the goals that you want to be because you're surrounding yourself around some successful people if you want to be successful you have to put yourself in successful positions if you don't want to be broken homeless you can't be on the block king with broken homeless people okay why do influencers collab with other well-known influencers? Because they share that, okay? You're not going to see no CJ so cool subscribing with little old me because I have 400 subscribers. Now, let's say I get me about three mil soon, 15 mil or something. Then we collab because we're on that same level. 
Or I could put myself in positions like now I'm producing quality videos so that I can put myself in positions to be around those people that I take aspiration from because they're doing something that I would like to do. Like A, it's Maya. She is a very good symbol of this. She's on her YouTube grind. She's doing it good. She's eating the girls up with content. So I watch her content. I feed it in. Maya Bad Kid. I feed it in. Because this is something that I want to do. Not just something that I want to do the way that I'm doing it now. But I want to, I want to be great at what I'm doing. So I could assume people who are doing this greatly. Preach to them now. Preach to them now. Preach! The person you are trying to reinvent yourself to be, you have to consume that. And you have to surround yourself around those people. Talk to me now. You literally got to get up, get on your Zoom, and stand on business. Don't be walking around letting people disrespect you. You got to check them. Because if they disrespect you, you let them disrespect you, they going to keep disrespecting you. They get over on you, you keep letting them get over on you, they going to get over on you. You can't let none of that slide. You got to nip that in the bud. It's going to be 2024. It's time to stand up and be the person you want to be and chase after those goals. You wanted to start that business started now. Right now. Get up and start planning. Work for it. You want to start that YouTube channel? What you doing? Create it. You want to get a big booty like mine? Get in the gym. What you aim for? Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Vlogmas 2 out.